Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yan Zheng. I'm from University of Utah. My talk, talk today is Alan Pinheiro. Oh, oh, sorry. Alan Pinheiro and the benefit selection for the kernel density estimation of large data. It's a co work with my advisor, Jeff Phillips. And so I will introduce some background a little bit. So, what is a kernel density estimate? Given point set of size n from unknown distribution, we want to find how to construct this unknown distribution. Uh, typical non-parametric ways doing that is through kernel density estimation. <coughs> Essentially, we put a point, we, for every point, we put a kernel on it, for example, the Gaussian kernel, and, and the sum for the, the kernel density estimation for each query point, the sum of uh, the average of the value of the kernel values are around this, this, this current point. So for the, this is the 11 point set, the kernel density estimation is, looks like this. And for the two dimensional data set, uh, here is the roadmap, um, uh, the open street map the data set can see there's a variation in kernel density estimation and the, the dense the area, the larger the kernel density estimation is. And so, uh, although it's called non-parametric uh, density estimate, that is, uh, it's, it's typically called a non-parametric, but it's there's a very important parametric in, in this our uh, kernel density estimation is called the bandwidth. So when the bandwidth, in this our example, when the bandwidth is five, the kernel density estimation is looks like this. And when the bandwidth is smaller, it will give a different, different way of the curve. And when the bandwidth is 10, it will smooth, more smooth out the point set. And from this example, although the same data set, but for different bandwidths, it can always give us different results and tell us the uh, different scale, different scale of the data. And so, um, because it's really time consuming when the point set P is really large, and so we want to approximate it, it use through a core set and approximate the kernel estimation under the original points using the core set to guarantee that the largest error between them is within the epsilon. <coughs> a typical way of doing that is through the discre discrepancy method. And it's uh, very easy, we can, we can color it uh, we can pair the points up and using the mean cost matching, and then we uh, randomly stack one of them at random, and then in this way, we have the point set in, into half the point set, and then we repeat this until it get our desired size. So the red point here is a core set of the original data files and in this first uh, image. And now in our paper, we want to solve two problems. First is the L infinity error estimation. How can we evaluate them? It's because it's really hard because we can't enumerate every points in the domain. And if we using the um, omega for the diff uh, for the core set uh, for the Q, then the settings looks like this. And then the, the second problem we want to solve is given the points at P and Q and the um, bandwidth for the P, how can we get the uh, bandwidth for Q such that the L infinite arrow is minimized. It is a little bit different from the Schroeder setting of the bandwidth because in the Schroeder setting, the, uh, the underlying distribution mu is unknown and the Q is randomly from mu and it's always uh, concerned about L1 and L2 arrow. And in our setting, the Q may not from P like the uh, method we're talking about, the discrepancy, discrepancy method. And the choice of the bandwidth may vary uh, largely. Let's look at another example, is the uh, one year temperature data. And uh, if you use, use the sigma is three, this green curve shows us the current estimation of the temperature data. And we enlarge it a little bit, you can see in the, 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 the enlarged figure that shows the really obvious daily trends. But if we use the bandwidth as 30, uh, 72 hours, it's around three days. Then the black curve shows that another current estimation since uh, it's, it's a little bit like the weekly trends. And so, and if we if in, in little bit enlarge it to 60 days, the blue curve shows the yearly trends. So there's no right or wrong answer for which bandwidth we want to choose. It is that just uh, with the scale you want to look at the data. 
So the, the smaller the bandwidth, the more detail we want to see. Uh, so why we want to choose L infinite arrow? Uh, so first is the stronger bounds. So any any arrow bounded by the L infinite arrow can also bound it by the LP arrow. And second, it can preserve the worst case error. And for this is really important in the situation when the kernel estimation about threshold can trigger alarm. For example, the Twitter data set, and this is the kernel estimation of the Twitter data set. And if there's a one spot really high peak, means that there's uh, some events uh, worth investigation. And if you use L1 or L2 arrow, we might miss the miss the point because we average all the situ uh, locations and and only one peak might not be detected. So, but using L infinite arrow, we can always guarantee we can find such peak. And uh, now we're talking about uh, the method we were using to solve the problem. So first, computing the L infinite arrow. Like we said, we can't enumerate all the points in the, our domain. So we want to find uh, approximation strategy to approximate it. So it's like generate a point set X in the domain, then um, the arrow return from the X is close to the largest arrow we are interested in. And so we 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 can prove it as in it's con it's um, close to infinity. It always always converge. And we we prove it by two step strategy. First, the, the gx the function the error function is Lipschitz continuous. Uh, then for any points is close to the largest error point, we can guarantee the error is always close to the largest error. And second, we when we want to prove that when it's close to infinity, it always can find a point that close enough to the largest error point. So where is the largest error point? The theorem one tells us it always in the Minkowski sum. Yeah, it's actually it's, a, it's like a bounding box around the whole whole um, points. It's like a Minkowski sum of the of the ball of the radius r and the min, uh, convex hull of the all the points in the uh, p union q. And to simplify this, we uh, relax it into a bounding box B, and then our traditional method can work on this. The method can be randomly select points from the domain, or choose the points uniform, uniformly from the original data set, or from the data set plus some noise, or add some, put the grids on it, or using some um, combination of the method. Besides the uh, ORGP, the from the original data set, all the methods are converged. And we want to adapt our data to this method, so we invested our uh, central method. It's essentially, so random choose the points in the um, P1 in the original data set, and then select the select, uh, neighbors from within the three standard division, and then using the central as our evaluation points. So we are, why we use the central because there are some theoretical guarantee, uh, theoretical evidence shows that the the largest difference of the current estimation is within the some central, and we just inspire from their method, and but this method cannot guarantee to convert because we have limited number of the points uh, of the central, so we 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 using our uh, weighted central. Uh, to, to do to make sure this is converged. Then we just essentially put, uh, instead of using the, just the points, we put a, uh, give the, each point a weight and also random and uh, perturb the, um, the points in the, in the ball. And then in this way, we can make the things converge and still can guarantee it uh, performs really well. And so now I introduce some bandwidth selection method we are using. And because we can, um, we we use our called the, the uh, search algorithm. We use the search algorithm, but we want to get first guarantee our uh, the function. The function of the omega is Lipschitz continuous, Me meaning uh, <coughs> so theorem theorem two tell us under certain condition, the h omega is li uh, beta Lipschitz, so that we can using any. A typical search algorithm can find the local uh, the global minimum. And if we using if our curves looks like the blue curve, 
then um, the Israeli, at uh, the local minimum around a very small area, the uh, search algorithm might not find it. So uh, this theorem tells us we can easily to find our minimum. And it, our method is, is called the random golden section search. It's typically based on the golden section, get golden section search. It's um, an algorithm applied for the unimodal function and then can always guarantee to find the local minimum. And, but our method, our function is not a uh, unimodal function. So we using the random golden section search, it is uh, essentially we just uh, random choose a, a, a start point and apply them several times. And in our experiment, uh, by running so many trials, we can always find the same global minimum and we, uh, we are uh, confident to say our, our uh, algorithm will work in, the, in our data set. And so now I will introduce some uh, experiment results. And so our, we, our paper presents uh, both uh, real and synthetic data sets. Uh, here we're only talking about the real data set. So the for the one dimensional data set we're talking about is still as uh, the same before, it's the temporary data, it's already temporary data. And uh, using as soon as 0 0.02, we got a core set around 100 points. And uh, for the uh, two-dimensional data set is the open street map data set of the uh, state of Iowa and it's around a million points and using epsilon is 0.1 we can reduce the core set into around thousand and we want to apply the bandwidth selection method to this data set and so first look at the result uh, how to find the best evaluation points as we as we said as X X is uh, uh, the larger, the larger, the larger arrow we will find it. And we can see the, when it's Plato, this is the largest arrow we care about. So, um, so although all the method, uh, almost all the method is converge, but we want to find out in practice which much, which one converts faster. The, that's, so the higher the curve, the faster the arrow will converge. And in this method, the weighted century works, works well, mm, but, uh, but the rand, all the method works all the, all the well, but rand and uh, rand and uh, grid also works well, and it's easy to implement, so we recommend using it in one dimension. And the next step is choosing the new bandwidth for it. Like we say, if you use the original bandwidth, the arrow is really large, so we using random golden section search to find the best omega give the flowers, the smallest arrow here. And we can compare the results. If we're using, if uh, the blue curve is original, uh, current estimation, and the black one is really bumpy and have very large arrow is if we're using the same bandwidth as original data set. And, and using the, the green one is the one we are looking for the best bandwidth. You can see it's, it's almost match the blue curve and with very small arrow here. And for two dimensional data set, and uh, we, our results looks like this and the X is around 10,000 uh, 10, points. And the, the weighted century also, also works well, but the grid and the rent is not as good as in one dimension. And this is also give us the how uh, the result to find the best bandwidth for this for the two dimensional data set. And the original one always has large arrows, so we use in the golden section search to find the best bandwidth. And this is a visualization of the two dimensional kernel density estimation. And for the uh, the the this is the original one, and we if we use the bandwidth omega, so the same as the original one. This is the, we can see there's a lot of isolated area, means that generate more a local minimum as um, compared to the original data set. And if you use the, the bandwidth we are get from the random golden section search, you can see it smooths out the low isolated area and can get a better result. And so are we, I also, uh, our our method also works for L1, L2 arrow. I uh, plot this, the blue and the, the red curve give us the f how to find the local, the, the mean the points has the lowest L1, L2 norm. 
they always have the similar points as the L, L infinity arrow. So it's like um, L, L infinity arrow can also bound the L1, L2 norm. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much. So I do have a question. So you presented some presented some very positive results. Um, did you come across any results which actually broke the technique, or do you have any ideas when it won't work? Our our techniques works for the data sets has uh, has lar has uh, yeah like our data sets works for our our algorithm works for the data sets has multiple scale like temperature we can look at different scale and for the this L Y data we can see the different scale but for the data is not so much scale maybe it's not applied to our method so but our method can always find very positive result for this kind of data set. Any other questions? 